Hi there, my name is Miss Townsend and I love math. Welcome to Math with Townsend. This video is for grade 9 academic students who are studying the measurement and geometry unit of the course. As part of the measurement unit, we've looked at two-dimensional area and perimeter, we've looked at three-dimensional volume and surface area, and now part three, we look at optimization. So as part of this video, we'll explore the definition, we'll do an actual exploration of optimization together, and then we'll summarize the important points. And this is my title page for optimization, and I'm going to explain to you that what's important in this picture is not the animal, although he's lovely, what's important is the fence. In grade 9, we've studied an awful lot of math, but we still have a long way to go in our high school career. So unfortunately, a lot of optimization problems are going to be limited to something about fences. So I apologize for that, but, you know, fences are kind of neat. And I do promise you that at some point you're going to get to calculus and then you're going to have all kinds of fun optimization to do. So let's start with the word optimization. Are you familiar with it? Have you heard it before? Well, this is what I usually do in class. I talk about this guy. So many students recognize this as Optimus Prime. Um, but I ask them, do you know what his name actually means? Well, Prime means first as in primo. Um, Optimus means best. So in a way, Optimus Prime is the first best transformer. And of course, then the class breaks into some sort of debate as to who the best transformer truly is, etc., etc. But for our purposes, it's important that you know, you probably are familiar with the idea of optimization if you know the word Optimus or perhaps the word optimal. It simply means the best. So what is the optimal drive to downtown means what's the best route we can take. <clears throat> now, in optimization in mathematics, and specifically in measurement, generally means this. We're trying to determine the best possible shape given certain constraints. And best shape is usually defined as, so for example, Maybe I want the maximum area if I have a fixed perimeter. So the fixed perimeter would be my constraint. It's the thing that means if I just wanted the maximum area, I would say, well, make a circle as big as the universe or bigger. Um, and that obviously doesn't make a lot of sense. So it's maximizing something when something else is fixed according to some sort of limitation. So constraint or another word you can think of as limitation. Um, perhaps you're trying to maximize volume given a fixed surface area. Perhaps you're trying to minimize the perimeter. Perhaps you're trying to minimize surface area. So optimization means that you're finding some sort of maximum or some sort of minimum, and you have some sort of limitation when you're trying to do that maximizing or minimizing. So. Let's see if we can make sense of it by doing an exploration together. And here's a question that we're going to do. It says a farmer wants to make a rectangular enclosure for his sheep. And he has 600 meters of fencing for the enclosure. What are the dimensions of the optimal rectangle that the farmer could create? So you can see the word optimal here. And obviously, that's the word that relates to optimization. So you can think of this as the best rectangle the farmer could make. And that means we want to either maximize or minimize something. So let's look a little more carefully again at the information. He has 600 meters of fencing. Now, and he's making a rectangular enclosure. So if he's making a rectangular enclosure, what does 600 meters mean to this rectangle? Well, what I'm looking for is the fact that 600 meters must be the perimeter. Because when you put fencing up, you don't put fencing all the way through because that would mean you don't have any room for your sheep and you spent a lot of money on fencing. So the perimeter is 600 meters. So I know what the perimeter must be for my sheep enclosure. It must be 600 meters. Therefore, I want to know what the area is. 
and I'm trying to find the optimal area. Now, does that mean I want the biggest area or the smallest area? Well, obviously, I want the biggest area. Why would I put my sheep in a small area? And besides, if I wanted the smallest area, I could just make an enclosure where I put one line of fencing like this and put the next line of fencing touching it, and then my sheep, well, they don't get to do anything. So that's the concept of the question. So again, let me clear this screen. That was just thinking out loud. And let's again review what we know. We know that we have a set perimeter. Fencing is perimeter, so we know the perimeter must be 600 meters. And we are trying to find the maximum area possible considering the constraint or the limitation of only 600 meters. So here's what I want you to do. Take a pen and a piece of paper, and I want you to write down the dimensions, meaning the length and the width, of three rectangles that the farmer could make. And again, it has to have a perimeter of 600 meters. Don't worry about maximizing area yet. I just want you to write three rectangles that the farmer could create with this much fencing. Here are three rectangles that I got. So one of them is a 50 by 250 meter rectangle. Now, another one could be 80 by 220 or maybe 175 by 125. So can you take a moment please and do this, which is verify that these rectangles all have a perimeter of 600 meters. So what you should notice is that the two numbers I've given you for a rectangle add to 300. And that's because if I have one width and one length, I have half my rectangle, which means it should count for half the perimeter. And that's one method you could use for quickly finding a number of different rectangles. If I know the perimeter has to be 600, then I'm going to look for two numbers that add to 300, because then I've covered half the perimeter, and the other half is, of course, just the other width and the other length. So for example, if I say 10 meters, then I know the other dimension has to be 290 meters because they add to 300. And that's just a little fast trick for finding um, dimensions if you know the perimeter. So we verified that all of these numbers add to 300 and therefore they all have a perimeter of 600. So obviously what we could do now is we could calculate the area of each of these rectangles including the rectangles that you made without me, and figure out which one's the best, meaning which one produces the maximum area. Well, first of all, just by looking, which one of these would probably make the sheep happiest? Well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe sheep just like to run back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I guess I don't know much about sheep psychology, but I do know that we're trying to maximize area. Um, so, Here's what I did. I went to Microsoft Excel and I used Microsoft Excel to quickly find a whole bunch more rectangles that also have a perimeter of 600 meters. So again, you can check quickly by adding these numbers together. If these numbers add to 300, then the whole perimeter would be 600. So here is a bunch of rectangles, all of which have a perimeter of 600 meters. Our goal is to find which rectangle has the best or biggest area. So again, to find area of a rectangle, you do length times width. So again, I had the computer do that for me. And it calculated length times width and gave me the area of each of these rectangles. So here is length and width. And again, all of these rectangles have a perimeter of 600. And here are all the different areas I could produce. Some of them are quite small, and some of them are fairly big. So if you look closely at these areas, which one is optimal? In other words, which one is the best possible area given the constraints of having a perimeter equal to 600 meters? Well, again, we want the biggest area possible for our sheep. And so this one here is the biggest area we could get, 2,200 and 500. Sorry. 
22,500. Hmm, bigger than I thought. <clears throat> now, to be sure that that's the maximum, I took the information that I had here, I took the lengths, and I compared the lengths to the area, and I made a graph. And the only reason why I made the graph is because me, I think it's easier to find a maximum instead of looking at the chart where I kind of have to scan and scan and scan. It's very easy to see where the maximum is if you look at this graph. You can clearly see that the, as the length increases, at first the area increases, but then it reaches a maximum. And as I keep making the length bigger, I now have a smaller and smaller and smaller area. So there's the maximum right here. And again, that looks like about 22,500. And the length, well, that's 150. So therefore, we've answered the question. We have discovered that the optimal area is 22,500 square meters. And this is found when the length is 150 and the width is 150. So there's my diagram. Now notice what this sheep says, and you may have already noticed that. This is a square. So warning number one, I don't want to hear anybody say this. You said you wanted a rectangle, but that's a square, so that can't be the right answer. Oh boy, that's a sad thing for me to hear. A square is a rectangle. It just is a special rectangle. I live in Ontario, so I'm an Ontarian, but I'm also a Canadian. I'm just a special type of Canadian. A square is also a rectangle. It's just a special type of rectangle. So please don't think that a square is not a good answer just because the question said rectangle. A square is in fact the best answer. So when the sheep says, hey, that's a square, that's actually the whole point of this lesson is that, well, let me show you. The whole point of this lesson is that the optimal rectangle is a square. So if you're trying to find the best rectangle given a certain number of constraints, you want to make a square. Got it? I hope so. Here's another question, and we're going to go through this one a little faster. A contractor is pouring cement to create a rectangular playground for local children. After the cement dries, the area will be surrounded by an expensive, environmentally friendly fence. See, I told you about the fencing. The total area of the playground is to be 240 meters squared. What dimensions would minimize the cost of the fencing? So again, look at what we know. We know this time that the area has to be 240 meters squared. This time we know the area, and if we're trying to minimize fencing, well, we know that fencing is perimeter, so we're trying to minimize or optimize fencing. And that means that we want to minimize perimeter. Oh, perimeter. So let's see what happens. Here are some here are some rectangles that have an area of 240 meters squared. 5 times 48 is 240. 12 times 20 is 240. 16 times 15 is 240. Um, and you can see they all have different perimeters. So again, I used the computer. I said, give me a whole bunch of rectangles that all have an area of 240 meters squared. Then I said, show me their perimeters. So some of these rectangles have perimeters as big as 244, but down here we have some pretty tiny perimeters. And again, we're trying to minimize perimeter because putting up fencing is expensive and you want as little cost in your fencing as possible. So, and if you look again, look carefully, I'll do it down here, the two numbers that tie for minimum perimeter are both really close to squares. 15 by 16 is pretty close to a square. You can see in the graph that there is a minimum value per perimeter. And unfortunately, we're running out of time in this video, so I'm going to have to continue it in video number two.